Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about your bicycle's drivetrain and why it's important. Really what I'm actually gonna talk about is the number called a gear ratio, how you can calculate it, and how this simple calculation can help you when trying to evaluate if the drivetrain is right for you while you're shopping online, when you're looking at a bike in the store, whatever. We're gonna tell you, I'm gonna talk to you about the number and the equation that I use to calculate what I call gear ratio. Now let's look at what a uh, drivetrain actually is for the beginners. So, a bicycle drivetrain is the system that transfers the power from your legs to the wheels, enabling the bike to move. It typically includes components like the pedals, crankset, chains, cassette, derailers, and sometimes a belt instead of a chain. When the rider pedals, the crankset turns, moving the chain or the belt through the gears of the cassette, which then rotates the rear wheel, propelling the bike forward. The derailleur shifts the chain across the gears to adjust the resistance, allowing the rider to maintain an efficient cadence. You're gonna adjust the derailleur if you're going uphill or if you're on the flats, you're going downhill, you're gonna make your adjustments. Now the two important components to be concerned with when evaluating a drivetrain are your chain rings up front that are attached to your cranks and the cassette attached to the wheel. Now the chain rings for beginners or people who don't know bike lingo, if it has one chain ring, we'll call it a one by. If it has two chain rings, we'll call it a two by. If it has three chain rings, we'll call it a three by. Three bys are usually on budget bikes or touring bikes, two by Two by systems are on road bikes, and one buys tend to be on mountain bikes and gravel bikes. There's no hard and fast rule. Any bike can have any style of drivetrain if the bike allows you to fit those components, um, but the drivetrain will tell you what the gear ratios are. Now, all of these chain rings and cassettes will be rated by the number of teeth they have. So for the chain ring, uh, for mine up front on my Poseidon, I have a 40 tooth chain ring. Now the cassette at the back will rate it from a range between 11 teeth and 48 teeth. So that's the cassette at the back. The chain ring at the front will usually have either one to three numbers based on if it's a one by two by three by, and the cassette, based on the amount of speeds of the bike, if it's a 10 speed bike, it'll have 10 gears on the cassette. If it's a nine speed bike, it'll have nine. If it is has a front derailleur with two chain, um, with a chain ring, two chain rings on it, and a nine speed at the back, you times the amount of chain ring two, by the cassette at the back, nine, and you'd have an 18 speed. So that's how you work out how many speeds are on a bike. That being said, now you wanna work out if these speeds, if uh, the chain rings, what they're going to do for you. Do you need them to get up the hills? Do you need them to go fast on the flats? So the equation that I use is the chain ring number of teeth divided by the cassette number of teeth equals the gear ratio. Five is fast. For a ballpark, if it's around the number five, it's gonna be fast. This is a high gear. This is gonna be harder to pedal and what you'll want on the flats. If it's five and above, then you're going super fast. If the gear ratio is one and below, you're definitely gonna want that for going uphill. And you know, everything in between that five and the one, you can kind of gauge, you know, what kind of hill or gradient would I need to have one gear ratio. On my bikes, I always try to get my climbing gear ratio because I live in such a hilly area below one. I try to get it at, at least 0.8 or something and I will feel comfortable comfortable that I can ride all of the places that I used to ride and not have to sacrifice anything. If you live in a flat area, you may not need a gear ratio as low as one. Therefore, you might prefer a bigger chain ring up front or a smaller cassette with tighter basing increments between the gears. Or you may even like a single speed with just one gear at the back and the chain ring up front. If you live in a hilly area, if you live in a hilly area like me, you might want that dinner plate cassette at the back or a two by system that can accommodate a wide range of gears to make sure that you still have some some speed on the flats, but you can still get up some of those steady inclines. So if you have a one by system, you may have to sacrifice top speed because your top chain ring, if it's too big, it might make it too difficult to get up some hills. Those are the considerations. For any drivetrain, I need to know the highest and lowest gears before I'm even interested in purchasing that bike. I don't care what color it is. I don't care how cool it is. If it's a brand new bike, it's not affordable to change your drivetrain. It, it is a very expensive, or it can be, 
depending on the configuration of your bike, a very expensive upgrade. Even just to change one speed on your bike can be a hassle. So it's really important to, when you're getting a new bike and you have biking experience, understand what kind of drivetrain is going to work for you and make sure that it'll be able to accomplish all the riding that you want to do in the city. So here are some examples of drivetrains from bikes that I've purchased. Keeping in mind that I live in an area that's going to be hilly, and so I want my bikes to be able to accomplish hill, hill climbing, but still not be too slow. I still want some speed, but I'm definitely going to prioritize making it up hills over my top speed. So we'll look at the Poseidon X. That came with a one by system. It came with a one by 10 system. So I have a one chain ring up front and a 10 cassette, 10 sprockets in the back. Stock configuration, it had a 38 chain ring with 11 to 48 in the back, okay? So my Fazari, it came stock as a two by system. It had two chain rings up front, a 46 and a 30 tooth. The cassette at the back had a range of 11 and 36 teeth. My Cannondale came with three chain rings, a 48, 38, and a 28 tooth chain ring with an 11 to 34 cassette in the back. So let's work out the gear ratios of these three bikes. The first one, again, I'm always gonna wanna find the top gear and the bottom gear. You don't need to go crazy with anything in between. You just need to go, how fast can it go and can it climb hills? So for the Poseidon X, you see the top gear is 38 divided by 11, which gives us a gear ratio of 3.45. The bottom gear for climbing, going up hills, 38 chain ring divided by the 48 cassette, because I want the biggest cassette at the back to climb hills. And you'll see that I have a gear ratio of 0 0.79. So like we said before, that 0 0.79, because it's below one and below, you know that you can get up a lot of things. But, and you can see from the top speed, the gear ratio is sacrificing a little bit of top speed because it's just a one by. I ended up putting a larger chain ring on that to give it a slightly more top end speed, but then that'll sacrifice a little bit of the climbing. The Ferrari Schaefer, the top gear is that 46 chain, you divide it by 11, you have a number of 4.2 for your top gear. So you see that already is faster, also with the geometry and the configuration of the Fasari bike, that's likely gonna just be a faster bike overall because the drivetrain is allowing for a, um, more power input. The bottom gear of that one, the climbing gear, because it's a two by, I'm dividing 30, the small chain ring by the large cassette at the back, or the, yeah, the large cassette at the back, the 36, and I'm getting a gear climbing ratio of 0 0.83. So pretty similar to the Poseidon as far as the range, but I get a little bit more top speed. I sacrifice a little bit of climbing, but not that much. So now let's look at the Cannondale T400. I had three chain rings, the largest one being the 48. So I'm gonna find out what the top gear of the 48 divided by the 11, that 11 cassette, I get a gear ratio of 4.3. So this so far has been the highest number as far as gear ratio. and. I gotta say, the Cannondale, it was a fast bike. The bottom ratio, that 28 divided by 34, I'm getting a climbing ratio of 0 0.82. So the funny thing is, when you look at all of these systems, even though they're one by, two by, and three by, they have a similar range. You're not sacrificing too much on any of these systems. And all of these systems are specifically geared towards my riding in which I don't ever wanna have to walk my bike up anything or really have to stand too much when I'm riding if I don't want to. I don't mind standing because I choose to and get a comfortable position, but you don't want to have to stand to make the gradient. You want your gears to be able to be sufficient enough to get up the hill if you can. It'll just save you energy, save you on fatigue. So when you're a novice or you're just looking out and you watch this video, you may start to realize it's not the number of gears that matters so much. It's the gear ratio. It's however many gears I have, do they suit the riding that I, uh, that I wanna do? If you're living in a flatter area, I would say you don't need to be as particular but if you're living in a place where you know there are hills, you kind of have to be pretty diligent about working out the uh, gear ratios of the bike and you know, kind of envisioning, can I make it up the terrain where I live with this drivetrain? So that is a, a valuable tool when you're shopping online, is just to calculate that gear ratio so that you kind of can see if that bike is for you. Because from experience, if the drivetrain does not work for you, the bike, it, it can take a cool bike with other cool components and really just make the experience not fun. So I would argue if you're getting a used bike, it's not as big a deal, but if you're paying for a brand new bike and you just wanna go out and enjoy it, make sure that drivetrain is something that 
will be useful to you in the type of writing that you do. 